out of uh, Acts chapter 7. Sister Millwood always, already mentioned it. Acts chapter 20, 17, verse 24 through 27 is where we're going to start today. You see, I was, I was raised in Western Canada. How many have been in Western Canada? How many, how many have been in Alberta? Can I see your hands? Uh, very few. Okay, very few of you have had the pleasure of being in Alberta. Great place to grow up in. It's cold there in the wintertime. Not cold like here. Cold like minus 40, minus 50. Okay, so it's cold there. That's at least especially it was when I grew up. But I grew up there, and uh, as you notice, my skin is, is rather pink. And uh, uh, almost everybody at that day was as well. So I grew up never, never encountering uh, many people of other races. There were some Chinese there. There were, there were quite a few First Nations people. Uh, at that time, we, we called them Indian, but uh, now it, it's not popular to do that. They were here before us. And so it's interesting because how we grow up kind of shapes us a little bit, doesn't it? And it shapes what our norms are. And so what was normal for me in, in high school, I don't think I ever, I don't think I had one black person in any of my classes in, in our school when I grew up. And so it wasn't a custom, it wasn't part of me. So I had no negative thoughts about people of other colors of skin. I had no positive thoughts that one was better than the other. All I had was what I was living in at that day. And the First Nations people that I saw, I saw ones that had come out of the places where they'd lived traditionally into the city. And often when they came there, they were troubled. And some of them were alcoholics and some were prostitutes. And they were visible in front of me. And so then it was so easy for me to think, well, maybe everybody's like that. If, could, I'm, just, I'm just being transparent with you. I knew, I knew they weren't, but, but it's easy to come when that's what you grow up in. Many of you have grown up in cultures where everyone around you was black. Everyone around you was Filipino. Everyone around you was Indian because that's where you grew up. We all have a place where we start. But it's where we go that is where it chooses where we please God or not. And then I moved up into the very northern part of, uh, uh, of Alberta into Coal Lake. And in that area, I was surrounded by three Métis settlements and one First Nation Reserve. And I was pastoring and they became part of our church family. And I discovered that some of the, the issues that were going on in their community that were, that were horrible. It, they told me they told me that in excess of 75% of the girls before they were even teenagers were victims of incest in their own homes. How horrible is that growing up? And yet I had them in my church and God moved powerfully through them and I saw how beautiful they are and how, how God was using them. And I, I saw some that would come in and they would, the, the one woman who brought in, she brought in the tithe and she honored God as a First Nations woman married, living on a reserve, honoring God and her husband was not a believer, a follower of Jesus. And her husband found out that she was giving the tithe. And guess what? He said, don't stop. You need to continue. I had, he had a gravel truck. He was the only one that was busy. And the others were not. And God was blessing because of what the, the wife did as a woman of God. And we saw God move in that area that way. And, and so I, then I started to have a love for the First Nations people and see God's hand upon them. And then I moved down to Ontario, and, and again, I was down in Niagara where there were not many white people, <laughs> there was all white people down there, lots of Dutch people. And so I saw the Dutch people, and I saw how God had used them and how they were very careful with their money and how they were always counting pennies and always just, just doing things. And so they had a certain way of doing things, but then I got to appreciate them. Then I started really traveling the world. I've been to 59, 60 countries around the world already and, and seen what God is doing and, and fell in love with India and the people there and, and I went to Africa three or four times and fell in love with the people there. And I discovered that God doesn't look at our color of our skin. He looks at the heart that we have and he's called every person, regardless of color of skin, to be able to honor him and worship him. Is that true? 
And he loves us all. And God put that love inside of me that when I came here and in excess of 75% of the congregation here was from Jamaica and other islands. And, and then there was another 5 to 10% that were from West Africa. And I felt right at home. I found out that, that I really was only white on the outside. And I, I just saw that, that God, God put this love on the inside of me for the people around. And I see Ed and Donna back there, uh, Labanowitz and, and Often there are only four white people in the congregation on a Sunday morning. And it was us <laughs> and then them. And then sometimes they couldn't make it and it was just me and, and, and Pastor Jill. And guess what? When I travel to other places and I see all white faces, I wonder where everybody is. No, I'm, I'm serious. It's like I don't feel at home. I, feel, I don't feel like this is really what, what, what God's plan is. Because when we get to heaven... There's going to be every tribe, every tongue, every national background. And we're all going to be worshiping God together. And we're not going to be looking at the color of a skin or the way, the background, or are you rich or are you poor? We're just going to be focusing on Jesus. Is that right? So to me, we need to start right here. And this is Black History Month, and I understand that with what's happened to, to many folks, especially the, the North Atlantic slave trade that, that happened, I was reading, and, and just how horrible that must have been. Did you know more than 12 million people were moved from Africa over into the Americas over centuries as, as slaves? And many of them lost their lives on the way over. And more than 10 million settled in the Americas, mostly in the Caribbean, understand, mostly in the Caribbean, but, but some in the rest of North America, and came as slaves and were treated poorly. And that, that, that hits my heart because I, 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 because I know you, I know others. We're all the same in God's eyes. How must that have hurt God's heart? But God had a plan, and God enriched their lives. And the Spirit of God came upon them. And the place, especially in America, where the, where the slaves had come, they had beautiful songs of praise to Almighty God that have enriched and changed the whole culture of worshiping God by the songs that they instituted, they sang, they brought with them. I mean, God used them to come to America and really revitalize things and bring about a revival in many areas. I was reading about the first woman evangelist in the AME Church, African Methodist Evangelical Church, and, and then she was a black woman that had been a slave, and she went, and they wouldn't let her preach in a black church, so they invited her to the white revivals, and she had revival meetings all across, and traveled walking, walking for 2000, more than 2,000 miles in a season of her life to be able to preach. So God loves everyone. Is that right? Let, let, me, let me read that Bible verse. Acts chapter 17. I know you were there. He is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is the Lord of heaven and earth. He doesn't live in man-made temples. No. And human hands cannot serve his needs. For he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything and he satisfies every need. From one man, one blood, he created all the nations through the whole earth. He decided beforehand where they should rise and fall and he determined their boundaries. Do you catch that? His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him. Find him, though he's not far from any one of us. God does not always institute migrations of people. But God uses it for his glory to bring about his presence and change the situation to bring about the will of God in the nations that are willing to receive them. Canada is opening its doors even wider. Now a half a million ones from other nations are invited into Canada. Did you know that? It was 300 and now they've opted to, to half a million coming in each year. And they will come from many different nations. In fact, this week, my friends, this week, on Thursday, 
You remember, three and a half years ago, we said we're sponsoring uh, a couple to come from Syria that are now in Lebanon and coming to Canada. It's taken three and a half years for us to get it through the red tape, but they're coming this Thursday. Corinne and Mara will be coming to Canada on Thursday. Praise God. Now, their city was Aleppo, which was bombed and had uh, uh, all kinds of horrible things, not just disasters, but horrible things happened there uh, from, from the Syrian government and all the fighting that was going on. They escaped during the midst of that, and that earthquake in Turkey hit Aleppo as well. And so now they're able to come to Canada and we as a church are supporting them for a year to help them get on their feet, be able to rally back together with their family that's come ahead of them and be able to get jobs and all those things. So what you're doing, you're giving today is helping others to come and be part of God's work here in Canada, lifting up his name. They're followers of Jesus and we know that God loves all people and he's chosen us all to serve him. In Daniel chapter 7, there's actually prophecy about that. God gave Daniel a prophecy about the end days. And he saw all tribes, all nations, all colors of skin coming together and honoring God and worshiping him. All of us are going to be in heaven together. Well, let me ask the question. How many want to be in heaven? Some hands are not up. Okay. All right. How many want to be there today? No, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that. In Revelation chapter seven, it says this. After these things, I looked. Behold, a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, all tribes, all peoples, all tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. My friends, God is calling out today in our day. This is a time of harvest. God is calling people in. When I was in China and I saw the people there, and I love China because I'm taller than most people. So it's a wonderful place. Lo, I'm with you always, right? That's the Chinese people. So even though there's some big ones, God, God, it was, but to see the masses of people, and when I was there many years ago, that there were literally tens of millions of Chinese followers of Jesus. Even though the government puts it down, God is still at work bringing them into the kingdom of God. And you know what they told me? They said they're believing for freedom to leave China and come to North America so they can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in North America to the people there that they observed have become materialistic instead of serving the living God. Wow. Wow. And then I was in Congo, and I was in Ethiopia, and I was in, in Kenya, and I was South Africa, and Mozambique, and other nations of Africa. And I see now God is bringing many wonderful folks to our church family from Africa as well. And we celebrate them as they come. Hallelujah. Why? They come with the love of God on the inside. And they come to declare the goodness of God here in our land. They come to prosper with their families. But guess what? God is bringing them as missionaries into Canada. I see many of our Filipino friends. I was in the Philippines in, in 1971. And when I was there, there was lots of struggles going on. It was under martial law at the time. And, and there was lots of economic difficulties. And then I was back again in 1980 and, and preaching in the parks and in the streets. And I saw that God had been moving powerfully in that nation. Even though the Catholic Church was very strong, there was the Spirit of God moving in the Catholic Church. They were getting born again, filled with the Holy Holy Spirit, praying in other tongues in the Catholic Church as well as in the other churches. And now God is bringing many wonderful Filipino families into BCF and into our community. Isn't this so wonderful? Can you understand that God is good and his plan is always good? And we sometimes look and say, oh, these migrations of people, it's, it, it's horrible that people were taken from their land and it's true. But when when they arrive in a new location, God meets them there and God uses them 
there. And that's what he's done with us. He's continued to move powerfully amongst us. Even here, we, we really celebrate the value of all people. Uh, that Daniel 12, 4, I, I love Daniel 12, 4, because it says in the last days, people are going to travel to and fro. Okay? So there's going to be easy movement of people around, and that's what's happening now. We can travel to other nations. You know, I was in Nepal, and then I was in India, and then I was here the next day. And this is the only generation when that could happen. And so now God is using it. And he's helping us to be able to know that he wants us to live for him in this day and to make a difference. And I've been so pleased with many of our church family on how they have stood up for God in their communities and stood up in a broader community, not, not just the, the ethnic community that you're part of, but in the broader community. In fact, go to the last slide, if you would, please. Uh, Michelle John is part of our church family. And she's a first responder in the city of Brampton. And so she put a proposal forward. She said, for Black History Month, why don't we wrap a fire truck and let it travel around and serve Brampton? And now they've done it through her initiation. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> Honoring black inventors. Uh, fr Thursday night I was on a call with the Canadian Black Directorate. They, they've asked me to be one of their advisors. And, and while I was on there, there, there was a spoken word that, that had all kinds of uh, uh, information about black inventors and what they've done and that. And so we want to celebrate what God is doing with all cultures. But this is Black History Month. And so we want to honor those that really have made a difference from our black community as well. For me, it's hard for me to say, to call many of you black. When I grew up, that was a slight because I was saying you're identifiably different than me. Now I understand for many, it's not a slight at all. It's honoring. And so thank you for being part of our church. <clears throat> Thank you for letting me be part of you. I, I'm honored. I truly am. And Sister Millwood, I, I honor you as, as a woman of God that's called by God to the city and made a difference. And I'm honored to stand alongside you in the ministerial with, with the others and be able to lift up Jesus in our city. And so that uh, fire truck you saw, it's scheduled to be back here at BCF at 12.45 today so that when people come out of our second service, they'll be able to see it in real, real life and actually touch and see what God is doing and lifting up all people in our city. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands and worship him? Yeah. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you care for all peoples. We thank you that you love us all equally. I am no, special, no more special than anyone else. But Lord, you love us with such a passion that Jesus, you gave your own life. Your blood was shed. That red blood of yours was shed for our lives. The red blood pouring through our veins. And so we've invited you, Lord. We've invited you into our lives so that you can live out through us demonstrate the life of God, we pray, in this community through each and every one of us. Regardless of color our skin, regardless of age, regardless of background, we ask you, Lord, to use our lives powerfully to make a difference in the community around us. Let us consistently lift up the name of Jesus. Let us never pull down one another, another race, another person that is different than us. Lord, let us never pull them down, but let us lift them up in the mighty name of Jesus, that you get all the glory. We call men and women into the kingdom of God now. We call them out of darkness. We come against every demonic force especially those in idols and those that are worshipped as gods, we say, no, there is one God. 
There is only one God. He is our creator. His son Jesus paid the price for all of us. For even idol worshipers. We call them out of their idol worship. And we call them into the kingdom of the loving and living God. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you Lord for your presence with us today. Help us to live for you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. I trust that the Word of God impacted your heart just the way it did mine. Remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can do that right now. And then tell a friend so they can join us and be online with us each week. If you'd like to help us be able to continue this ministry around the world, you can do so by clicking the link below. And I believe God's going to bless you as you bless many others. Have a great week. God bless you.